Hello, why mentalism and welcome to a sponsored Let's Play of Scythe Digital Edition. Uh, Scythe is actually a physical board game, which, which I actually own. I've actually got a copy behind me right now while I record. And this is the Digital Edition. Uh, this is sponsored by Asmodi Digital. So there'll be a link down below if you want to find out more about the game or get the game or whatever. And of course, because this is a sponsored video, there'll be some unconscious bias on my behalf. So I'll treat and keep my opinion out of it at least a little bit and let you make up your own mind based on the footage you see here. I'll put a slight bit more opinion into it than I normally would just because I own the board game. Uh, this is a game about running around, collecting resources, expanding your nation and occasionally trying to pick off vulnerable parts of other people's nations. Although the war part is actually more of a threat in this game than it is an active participant. Uh, you occasionally will be making these attacks, but they're pretty rare. So, we're going to dive in. There'll be a lot of stuff that you'll be like, wait, how does this work? But you should pick it up as we go along. It's actually not as bad as it seems going in, but there will be a lot of components where you'll be a little bit like, I do not understand this. So, uh, we're going to play with three bots, all on hard. We could play with a fourth. Like, you can play up to five players in this game. Obviously, you can play online and locally. I'm going to just leave that slot open, mainly to make the turns a little bit faster. And we're going to play as the Rusviet faction, um, partially just because they've got a nice, simple ability. So, let's dive in. Uh, I've put a few things in here, standard settings, you know. You can undo our last action. Um, you can set it to unlimited if you want to be able to play a game where you're, like, trying to learn more and you want the ability to be able to undo silly mistakes, uh, mainly because, you know, you don't know what the things are. You're like, I'll do that just so I can undo it. We've got promo cards included, and I've prevented the Rusviet industrial combination. There is a combination of cards that is just unbeatable. If you get Rusviet as your faction and your player mat, which is effectively like your starting condition, is industrial, there is just a combo where you can just win in 14 turns and no one can stop you. Uh, we're going to obviously prevent that, so if it gets drawn, it will just re-roll it. And we're going to dive in. So, that's us. By the way, each uh, faction has their leader and then a pet. Uh, P Poland's one is really nice. In fact, I, I, Poland's probably my favorite faction just from the sheer aesthetic of it. Poland has a bear, which is actually based after a bear that was in the Polish army. I think it was a corporal. Was it Lance Corporal? It was a corporal of some kind. Anyway, uh, so we start the engineering start so that our player mat is engineering. We start with two popularity, five money. Rusviet start with three. Um, Oh, I can't remember what it's called. It's Order or Discipline or something. And two uh, Fighty Cards. Fighty Cards is my technical term. Uh, our abilities up here. There is a bonus that we can get for scoring over here. Uh, number of encounters adjacent to your structures. Only count each encounter once. These count whether or not the encounter is still present. Rivers do not break adjacency. So having structures next to encounters on the board gets us bonus stuff. And also our secret objective, achieve technical mastery, have eight or more combat cards in hand and at least one combat victory star. So we've won a combat and we've got a lot of these combat cards in our hand. Or, or, you get two choices, create a permanent foothold, build at least three structures, have at least seven popularity and have zero mechs. Zero mechs. That is, um... Yeah, that's not going to happen. Mechs are very important in this game. I, we basically have to go for the technical master if we want the extra points there. So, we're going to dive in. This is the game board. Welcome. That's the factory in the center. This is Saxony. Hello. Mechanical. Poland. Patriotic. Nordic. Agricultural. And then Rusviet Engineering. And we're going first. So! Welcome to the game board. As you can see, there's a number of hexagonal tiles. There's lakes. There's rivers. There's also uh, wood, metal, oil, uh, food, and people, population. These are the basic resources of the game. In fact, if I expand this, you'll be able to see that we have uh, some of these up here. And these are the things that you need to be able to spend to gain other things. Uh, importantly, we actually start off over here since we have um, a mountain, which generates metal, and a village, which generates people. And next to us, we have a tundra, which generates oil. And then we've got this river that we're going to have to try and get across, or a lake. Uh, we can get rid of across those pretty easily, but that's our starting situation. We also have this, this big symbol for our faction. And you notice every faction has one of those as well. If you look around the edge of the board, you can see that there's a number of these symbols. That is effectively like our starting square. It's adjacent to these two. 
but it doesn't count as a square for anyone else in the game. So no one can actually attack this square. This square is effectively like a, oh, there's nothing there other than you fall back here if you lose. So it's to stop you being completely wiped out, but you can't really do much if everything else in the board is gone. So we're going to take our first actions. In the game, you have down here your actions. Uh, we can pick one of these to do, and then we can follow up with one of these below if we so wish. Um, we start off right now in a pretty good position. Now, normally my introduction would be to try and get some oil straight away. But oil's here. We would actually start with oil. And then to do this, which is upgrade, which is effectively like a research. It makes your player map better. Uh, however, it's going to cost us three oil. Some of these players will actually have a player map where it only costs them two oil to do an upgrade action. For us, it costs us three. We could trade, which is spend a coin for two things. Uh, you'll notice that there's actually a pretty obvious when you get used to the... Uh, what was it? The, term? Uh, the, the coding? The, the UI? The modus operandi? I don't know what you call it, but once you get used to the nomenclature here, like the, the look of the thing, you'll be like, oh, so that is get a coin. It's a green coin. Get a coin. This is a red coin and a green heart. So uh, you lose a coin and you gain a heart, which is popularity. And that's basically how this works. Each of these green ones is you gain and each of the red ones is you lose or you spend. So what we could do is we could spend a coin for two of these weird tombola stubble things. These are trade. These are, you can just pick a resource. So spend a coin, get two resources. Spend a coin, get a popularity. Spend a coin, get two power. Ah, that's what they're called, power. And this is two people running, two move actions. There you go. That's pretty simple. Uh, what we will likely do is go for production. So it is here. Two green hammers, which means that on two squares you get to produce stuff. We only own two squares at the moment on the board itself, like not counting this. So we could produce metal and we could produce people, which seems like a good idea because the more people you have, the more you produce. So we're going to take that. We're going to produce here and produce here. And then now we would normally be allowed to take an action off the one directly below. So we did this one. We'd normally be able to do this one, which is upgrade. We don't have any oil, so we can't. But normally you can take an action and then take an action from directly below. So end our turn. So you're producing, you produce an oil and metal. You trade, so you spent a gold to get two oil, I'm guessing. Yeah, they're going to use their oil to upgrade. And then you produce as well. So... And that's our turn again. We produced a lot of people. We now have three rather than two. And we have ourselves a metal. Thing is... We could keep doing this. Could keep producing more people. But I do want to try and get that oil. Oil is very important for us. What I think we'll do is we'll do the move action here. Move two units. And we can move a unit to here, start generating ourselves some food. And we can move a unit to here. Now, there is a river in between, but if we have a quick look at... Oh no, we don't have river walk, do we? Nah, I'm, I'm used to playing Nords. Nords have river walk. Their units can walk across the river. Oh, their workers can walk across rivers. Yeah, so we can't get the food. Hmm. We're gonna need oil for upgrades. We're going to need wood to be able to build stuff, and we're going to be we're going to need a mech because mechs can get the ability to walk across rivers to certain places. If we quick check, you'll notice that mech over here has a river walk, move across a river to farm or villages, so we can walk from say here to here because this is a village. Uh, we can walk from here to here, farms. We're going to need a mech, so mechs down here cost ah, engineering board. Ow, four metal. That can be reduced. Some different boards are cheaper, but four metal is going to be a pretty expensive buy. Hmm. Okay. We can do it. Right, we can do it. So we do a production action. Now, normally, you can't take the same action two turns in a row. You have to pick a different action. But, Rusviet, you may choose the same section or play mat as the previous turn. So we're going to produce that, get our metal, get our two, 
and then end our turn. They're doing upgrades of oil. And notice that they spent it to reduce the amount of oil they have to do. So their three oil here now became two. You reduce the amount of food you spend this action. You improve the number of moves you can make. You're trading. You're going to get, I'm guessing... Oh, you went wood. Okay. So our turn. We have four people sitting in this village. That's pretty cool. You can get up to eight workers. Uh, currently we have five on the board. I'm going to say we go with this one. The trade action. Spend a coin for two resources. There's a reason for this. We are going to gain two metal. We have four metal. But remember what I said about if you pick a top action, you can then take a bottom action. The bottom action here is spend four metal, get a mech. So we'll do it. Because now we now have four metal. One, two, three, four. And... Oh, I clicked here by mistake. Undo. There we go. And one, two, three, four. And oh, I actually didn't click in the wrong place. Right. We can take Riverwalk. We can take Tower Ship, move between any village you control and the factory. Ooh, that's pretty handy. Can we just move straight to the factory right now? Because we can move straight here. In the center of the board. Plus one move speed. In combat, where you've at least one work you gain, uh, you may play an additional combat card. Township is pretty awesome. But I think we want to go Riverwalk. So we're going to go Riverwalk and then place our mech here on the village. Now we'll end our turn. Saxony is moving. Saxony's ability is more fighty. They can get more points from fighting. So I gotta look out for them. Okay, you building? Yeah, you're building something. Windmill. Windmills produce something. They count as a worker. Right, so our turn. Now, surprisingly, if you look down here, we have move action. We can move two units. And here's the fun part. We have river walk, so our mechs can move across rivers. Mechs can actually carry people with them. So we can put these people into the mech, move to this here, and then start producing food. So I think that's a good call. We'll go for move. Now, we still don't really have any oil. We really do need to get on the bandwagon with that. It might actually be more tempting just to move people to here to start producing oil. Hmm. Oh, that's a tough one. Yeah, I think oh, as much as I want to go and get some food, I, I think we've got to move this way. So we'll grab the mech. We'll tell the mech to transport three people. And then move to here. And those three people can then generate three oil, which gets us enough to be able to upgrade. And then we'll get our Rosfiat character. Uh, I think her name is uh, Olga, off the top of my head. And we'll move it to here. Now, the reason for that is this symbol here, encounter token. Some squares around the board have encounter tokens. As you can see, my mouse keeps resetting. I think it's OBS. It wasn't doing this when I wasn't recording earlier. Um, these encounters will give you a random card, which has a cool choice. You can choose three things and something happens. Uh, importantly, Polani's ability is actually pick two of the results and you can have both of them, which is cool. So we're going to go here. And encounter... Okay. So, herd the sheep on the hillside for an afternoon. Gain two food and one popularity. Serve lamb for dinner. Pay two to gain one worker and three food. That's pretty tempting. An extra worker right now. In fact, right now, because we're getting pretty hard on our worker cap, we actually have to pay a power to get our next worker. Use the sheep to trip up a passing mech. Pay three popularity to deploy one mech. Can't do that. It's red because I only have two popularity. So I think we might go for the worker. And that also gets us three food, which we can use for this action. I'll talk about that later. So yeah, pay two dollars. Accept new worker. Yes. Take the food. 
Awesome. Right, and then now, because we have three food, and we're allowed to take the action below this on the board because we took a move action, we can actually do this, which is action, Enlist Recruit. We spend three food, and we get Enlist Recruit, and we get a monies. Now, Enlist Recruit is a special ability thing, so we're going to do this. Pay the three food. And now we get to pick. And what this is, is any time a player next to me, so uh, Nord or Saxony, uses upgrade, deploy, build, or enlist, we get something. It's basically saying, I know you're going to do a thing, so I'm going to get a bonuses from you doing a thing. And pretty obviously, most of you should have spotted that people are upgrading already because they want the new better stuff on their board to use. They want to get the research in early. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enlist on upgrade. And that means that anytime those two take an upgrade action, I will get something. So whenever you or the player to your immediate left or right takes this bottom reaction, you gain power. I gain power. That's pretty cool. Alternatively, I could say anytime they deploy a mech, I gain uh, money. Anytime they build a building, I gain popularity. Or anytime they take an enlist action, I can have uh, some combat cards. I'm going to go for power. And I will take a bonus to... Ooh. We get a one-time bonus every time you enlist. We could take two combat cards. We could take two popularity. Take two money. Mm. I'm going to say take the popularity. There we go. We'll end our turn. There you go. Now their mechs only cost two metal rather than three. But because they did an upgrade, I get a power. They spent that to upgrade, which means that I get a power. There you go. All right, our turn. Ooh, this is going to be a tough choice. Um, we have to pay a popularity, by the way, to get our next worker. I think we've got to produce resources. I think we've got to, just because I want that oil. And it's going to cost us popularity because we've got so many workers. The more workers you have, the more penalties you take. So we started to take, you know, we'll take a penalty in power. Now we'll take a penalty in popularity. Finally, you'll take, I think this is a penalty to money every time. Depending on how many workers you have. We can have up to two more. And that's why there's two over the top of this. It's been grayed out because we've got two workers on, on the board. Um, what do we have in the word of resources? Basically nothing. Okay. Yeah, we'll take a produce action. We'll generate three of that, and we will generate um, we'll generate an extra villager as well, and then we will take the bottom row action, which is to spend three oil. Now, many other boards have a different combination of these top bottom actions. Like uh, the board I was playing recently was move followed by upgrade. We've got production followed by upgrade, which is pretty powerful because you can produce the oil to spend on this bottom action, which is what we just did. So we'll do that. One, two, three. And now we can upgrade. We can upgrade one of our tops and one of our bottoms. So we could get an extra production tile. So instead of getting produced on two tiles, we could produce on three. We could get more popularity, more power, more combat cards, more movement. You can move an extra character or more money. I think we're going to go for the extra production. And we will then probably want to decrease the cost of upgrades. It's a pretty obvious thing. You want to make your upgrades cheaper so you can get more upgrades. Right. Let's end the turn. Saxony. Producing. Plania. Producing. Nord. Producing. Fair enough. Hmm... What 
What do we want to do? I kind of want to produce more stuff, but at the same time, that's going to cost us popularity. Uh, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, the choices. Alternatively, there are some events that we can do. Mm. Shah River Walks. We can river walk to a village or a... Yeah. Across rivers to farms or villages. Yeah, so we can go to a farm or a village. So we can go to a farm or a village. We can't go to here because that's not a farm or a village. Um, we could actually attack here. What that'll do is it'll kick their units back to here, and we will lose a popularity because we attacked workers. So, in this game, attacking does have its disadvantages. If you attack workers, they can't fight back. And so, sure, we'll take over this village. It won't really do anything because we haven't got a worker to work or anything, but it will stop them doing anything here and it'll kick them back. It will actually really cripple them because they will need to then send these people out to try and get more workers. Right now, they've only got, what, three workers? Yeah. It might be a good idea to stop Nord expanding. Uh, and I think we're probably going to want to do that. Yeah. So take the move action. They'll retreat. We lose the popularity. And then... Where do we want to go next? We could move one of you out of the village. We've almost maxed out our workers. You can only have eight. We've got seven. So there's no point producing two more workers when I produce one. So I can move one of you to, like, the metal. Or we could take the mech and move all of you to the metal. I think we'll move from here to here, though. And then we don't have the food to do the bottom action, so we just end our turn. There we go. They've made their mechs really cheap. It would be wise for me to enlist, and then any time they make a mech, I get something. Because I know they're going to be going for mechs now. It only costs them one metal for a mech. We can't get that cheap. We can only get this cheap as two because of our board. Different boards give you different um, abilities and possibly play styles. Okay. Hmm. I think we want to produce a mech. Yeah. I know it's going to cost us popularity to do this, but it needs to be done. Produce metal. Produce oil. And we should produce that last worker, I think. Yeah. And then we can spend some of that oil to upgrade. Now, what can we upgrade? We could get more popularity when we take the popularity action. Get more combat cards, get more power. More movement. Yeah, more moves is good. And... Reducing the cost of the mech. Yes. And you can see how the game is getting played now. You take these top actions, you do the bottom action when you can, and the idea is to try and combo top action to bottom action, so you're getting twice as much action for your turn. Of course, your player boards kind of determine how that's going to be. There we go. Plani is getting its mech upgrades in. Nord, extra person, extra wood. A building? Ah, a mine. So a mine is connected to the tunnel network. You see these tunnel symbols? If you are on anything with a tunnel symbol, you can go to anything else with a tunnel symbol. So you can go from here to here, which means that we have to defend these because that can be dangerous. But a mine counts as a tunnel for your faction only. So they could, in theory, send someone from here to any tunnel on the board. We can't do the same. We can't go from a tunnel to them and we can't use their mine. So we will probably want to get more metal. Aha, we can combo into this. So if we trade, and we get a metal. And we also get... What else results do we want? Um, oil. We could get probably a load of upgrade, maybe. 
Um, wood. We don't have any wood yet. Might be a worthwhile trade because we're going to have a troll getting wood. Or we get a bit of food going. And previously stated, we're going to want that at some point. Because we want more enlisting. Mm. Yeah, we'll go for the food. And then we'll buy the mech. One, two, three. People's army. Move between any village you control uh, or speed. We're going to go plus one hex per movement. And we will position ourselves here. So that we can take these workers and put them up here or here. Trade for oil. And then immediately spend the oil. Yeah, so they've got trade followed by their uh, research. They're giving us a lot of power, though. Power's used in combat. So if we want to take a fight, we're going to be in an okay position. And I mean, like, an opposed fight, not like chasing away workers. Now, we could take a production action. Ah, oh, we can't. We don't have the popularity to spend. So we're actually prevented from doing popularity, um, from doing production right now. I think we'll want to do movement anyway. The thing is, after movement we can take the food action, and I do want to take the food action to enlist. But I'm not going to have the food. And the only way to generate that much food, like get two from a trade, we could gain it from the production... No, we can't. Mm. I think we just have to accept this is going to be an inefficient move. So sure, we'll take a move. The mech, transport all units. And we'll go to here. Now, you might notice that the mech is like, hey, I can still move. That's because we've moved one. And the mech is now capable of moving two, because we've got the plus extra hex. So we can move the mech back. We can move over here, here. I'm going to leave it on the square with the workers. Defend the workers and able to move them faster. I'd actually want to get it aggressive with this mech. So I'm going to select our leader, and I'll start moving our leader towards the factory. There's a reason behind this. That's because I want the cool stuff. Okay. And then we'll end. Oh! We get a third movement, don't we? Oh, yeah! Ooh, who do you want to move? I'm going to move one of our workers to the metal. That way we'll have enough metal for another mech if we so choose. They went for the extra power. And they produce themselves a mech. And they have the ability to now move to mountains and forest, I believe is their river walk. You're trading resources for oil. You're going to spend the oil as an upgrade? No, you're going to build. Ah, they built a mine. They want to use the mine to get into the inner ring of these tunnels. So notice that we got river walk to be able to go across this river. A lot of you have chosen to instead build a mine and then use this mine to be able to transfer to any tunnel. We could have done that. We really need popularity. Popularity will get us so much. But it's literally spending one coin for one popularity. That's their entire turn. And it really galls me to do that. It's like, oh, it's just a one for one trade. It's not efficient. Uh, you know what? We'll just take a trade action. Oh, hmm. It'll be quicker. Yeah, we'll take the trade action. We'll get the food. That's three food. So next turn we'll be able to do the enlist. We definitely want to enlist on mechs. 
They went for an upgrade. They upgraded the popularity and made their enlists cheaper. They upgraded there. Okay, Polania. You got that cool bear. You moved to there. They didn't actually have anyone on here. There were resources, which means that the resources were unclaimed and couldn't be spent. You need to actively own a square by having someone or something on it, including a building, to be able to spend those resources. Our turn. Right, now here's the cool part. We're going to move. And then we can do that. So move, and we move you to the factory. Now there's a special thing we get here. Who else are we going to move? Um... I don't think that might be it. You know what? We can move to this farm here. It's a bit more... It's closer to Nords, and I think the Nords are scared of us. Oh, crap. I didn't mean to do that. I didn't move the... Peoples with us. You know what? I probably don't want to move anyone else. Probably okay there. One thing I am concerned about is the fact we've got a tunnel here and a tunnel here, both of which can be attacked. So we want to claim these sooner or later. I'm going to just click end move and then I'm actually going to... There we go. Redo. Confirm. And then, yes, I will transport the people. We've got free food. You know what? Let's start going for wood. Yeah, I'll transform them to the, the forest tile. Let's try and lock this wood down, because I'd like to start building some stuff. Especially if we can get ourselves a mine built, we can then start going to any of these tunnels. Hell, we could start raids on people who've got, you know, stuff on tunnels. Um, we can move one other person. I don't really think we do want to. Yeah, I'm going to end move. Yeah. Now, we're the first person to the factory, which means that we get to pick from the factory cards. The second person then gets to pick whatever's left. The third person gets to pick whatever's left. You don't have to go to the factory, but it gives you an extra thing. And this thing is, what's this gap? Why has it got a cog? You get an entire extra section of your playmat. Being, we get, say, let's pick you, random. We spend money, money. We get a mech, we get a power as our first action. And then the second action is a factory move, which is a one unit may move twice. That's pretty cool. We get an entire extra option for when we take things. Now, what would we like to t take? Uh, we could spend a card to gain a worker and two money. I'm already maxed out on workers. That doesn't matter to me. We could spend two money to gain a mech and a power. I'm um, kind of started to lock down the metal supply. I don't think that's an issue. We could spend a card to gain a technology. That's pretty cool. No more having to worry about oil. We are behind on the technology. We've only picked up two times so far. And we get a power. That's nice. Spend any resource. That's good. Gain a card. Uh, those are used for battles and stuff. Uh, I think Crimea can spend them on other stuff, but normally they're battles only. And gain two power. Or, this is the one I quite like. Spend anything. Gain a power. Gain a popularity. You know, we have popularity problems and gain of money. That's really nice. It's between that and this for me. This is just like, hey, cool. You want more tech? You, you get more tech. But it is spending one of these cards. And we don't have many. We've got one power two card and one power five. We'll get into these when we have a fight. Basically, obviously, power five is great. Power two is the worst you can have, as you can probably see. I think we're going to go for this one. And now we've got this extra choice when we take actions. We'll end up. Oh, no, we want to do this. We want to enlist. So, spend that. And then anytime someone deploys a mech, we get money. And we will accept a plus two combat cards, I think. We got a power level two and a power level five. Great, the best and the worst cards. You want to bolster power? Yeah, they're really packing that power in. That's a combat resource. And they went a mech. 
And they got an extra move with their ability they got with a mech. Hey, we get a money. That's great. They got food. They got metal. They got wood. And they enlisted. Right, anytime someone else does the enlist action next to you, it doesn't apply to me because you're opposite me. It's only left and right players. You went produce, you've got a lot of food. Some wood. Couldn't do anything with it. My turn. Right. We still don't need popularity, or we need popularity. Mm, yeah. I think we take this action. Now we get to pick what we want to pay. We will pay... I think we've only got one resource, do we? Only one oil. So yeah, we'll spend that one oil. We gain one popularity, one gold, one power. And then we can take this double move action. I think we will move here to get this event, maybe? Ooh, south. That's a pretty cool. Oh, look who looks so badass. Salvage guns from a secret underground facility. Gain two power and a popularity. Bribe the researchers to give you an advanced weapon. Pay two to get four power. Spy on the researchers' secrets after pretending to befriend them. Gain two popularity and gain one upgrade from any two resources. And any two resources. Uh, we're going to gain the popularity and two power. That's a pretty basic choice there. I don't see a, a bad result. And then... That's the end of our turn. We only moved two. We could have moved four because it allows you to take a two move. And each of our moves is two. But no, it wasn't really a massive point in doing that. Unless I wanted to go down here. I wanted to actually nick this from them. Now, they might well fight me. And that's fine. Because if they beat me, we'll get kicked back. They might well choose to do it. So let's see what happens. They went trade. So they're probably not moving then to fight me. That's fine. They made enlisting cheaper. And again, they upgraded so we get more power. You enlisted. When people take the enlist action. Yeah, okay. Very well. Great. Now, since it's our turn, I think the really obvious choice is we're going to do a produce. We're going to produce wood, oil, and metal. Then we're going to take the technology action to upgrade, spend two, and then... We could go extra popularity when we take the popularity action. We could go for extra combat card. We could go for extra power or extra money. Um... I'm thinking like maybe popularity, just because, you know, that sometimes is not going to cut it. Maybe we're going to need more popularity. Combat card is fine. That's a good option. Bolstering power, if we straight up just need power, that's great. Money I tend to find you can find from other places. You only take the action if you really need it. I think popularity. This is like important. I think the more important one is going to be this bottom rope. We can make enlist cheaper. We can make building something cheaper. Hell, we can make deploying a mech cheaper, which is also a pretty damn good choice. Um... I'm going to go deploying a mech. I want to make that two. So that's as cheap as that's going to get. And that... I think is a good place to end this episode. So, I haven't mentioned anything about scoring in the endgame. I didn't really want to get into the complications of like where we're going. More, this is our tactics for now, and this is how the game works. I know that this has been a lot of how this game is working, and I've been describing what I'm doing, which I tend to try and avoid a little bit, because I like to talk about more esoteric stuff or whatever, rather than focusing on, I'm clicking the button. But it's a good introduction to the game to be able to start doing that. Now you know vaguely the basics, and you can see what the tactic is to make the actions efficient, to try and get to your two actions, and you go rather than just the top bar one. You can see where we're going. I'm hoping that in the coming turns we can try and do a couple more production, get a load of resources stacked, do a couple of building. We haven't actually built anything yet. We're ready. We've got three wood, and it costs us three wood at the moment to build anything. Um, maybe get an extra mech or two out. I'm just aware that we are pretty big targets right now. In terms of who is winning, uh, 
Nordza. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, yeah, the Nords are winning right now. We're second. Polania is then third and Saxony with nine points. It's really far away, but that's because they're gearing up for war. They haven't really done much expansion. They've got very limited resources. They haven't really built anything. They're straight up ready for war. And if we have a quick check of their stats, you'll see that, oh, they've only got seven power. Interesting. They're fully technologied. They've got all six technologies. We've only got three. Um, what is it going for them? Not very much. Okay. Which makes us all the bigger of a target. Anyway, for now, I've been at Erlison. This has been uh, sponsored by Esmodic Digital. There'll be linked down below if you wish to go check out the game or anything. Uh, it's also a physical board game. I may or may not like it. You can make up your own decision on that. I don't want to try and sway you because obviously I'm biased. But for now, I've been at Elysium. Like, subscribe. Let me know down below if you're enjoying the game, uh, especially when it comes to stuff like board games. I know this is a sponsored video, but it's also a really good idea to get a feel of like, do you like me playing these board games? I know that some people like board games on PC is hard to get into, but some people are like, I really love board games. So I'd really like to hear that feedback. Um, but yeah, until next time, stay shiny.